Hey guys, welcome back. It's Adam the Science Studio, and today we're going to be going over glycolysis and the net. Uh, what we what we net from glycolysis is uh, going to be eight ATPs and two pyruvates. We're going to get two direct energy sources from ATP, and we're going to get uh, two indirect sources, which will make eight ATP. So in glycolysis, we have it kind of broken up into two different groups. One area we're going to lose ATP to in order to gain, and the other area is where we're just gaining and that's gonna be the harvest area. So to so yeah, so to begin things, we're gonna start off with D glucose. D glucose is our starting uh, glucose polymer, and it's gonna go down and it's gonna make glucose six phosphate. So yeah, D glucose makes glucose six phosphate, and this is an irreversible um, reaction. So. You're going to take ATP and ADP. Remember that we said we're going to lose some, so this is going to be our first loss of a phosphate. And this is done by hexokinase, an enzyme. Pay attention to the end of the enzyme name. It'll tell you a lot about the enzyme and its function. So kinase is important because it deals with ATP. So we're going to lose our first ATP here. And we know hexokinase is the enzyme. Knowing that it's hexokinase, we know it's directly related to ATP or direct energy. So direct energy is anything like ATP, GTP. It's what you're commonly used to hearing, UTP even. So that is that. And that is our first, we lose an ATP. It takes energy to make D-glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate will turn into fructose 6-phosphate. And this is just a conformation change. So nothing big here i would i i mean it's not it's not huge at all so uh fructose 6-phosphate is just a uh, structural change and this is done by excuse me i'm gonna write in green color my enzymes in green this is done by uh phosphoglucose uh, isomerase phosphoglucose isomerase isomerase tells me a little bit about the enzyme it tells me in isomerase is not similar to mutase in which it's a uh, it's like a structural change it doesn't do much to the molecule it just changes like an OH group or the orientation so it's just a minor change no it's usually reversible this is reversible so I should have drawn a up arrow as well but um, just a structure change it's not a big deal and fructose 6-phosphate can go back to glucose 6-phosphate if it wants and uh, no energy is transmitted during this time Fructose 6-phosphate is coming down, and this is going to be our bigger change, and it's going to make 1,6-fructo-bisphosphate. So 1,6-fructo-bisphosphate, and this is where our harvesting stage is about to become, and this is the split. So this is where our cycle happens twice as well, and we're going to lose our an additional phosphate here. I drew that pretty ugly, so I think I'm going to redraw it and see if I decided to do that. Yes, I did. Cool. So um, this is where we're going to take an ATP, and we're going to make it into ADP, so we lose another phosphate group here. And because we're losing a phos or because we're dealing with ATP, we know something about the enzyme. It may have kinase involved in the naming. So it's PFK is a hint. What could it be? Well, using the name, we could say that's phosphofructokinase. So phosphofructokinase. This is a very, or phosphofructose kinase, my bad. But it's a very important enzyme. And this is one of our regulating enzymes as well. So if we have too much ATP, it'll be a negative inhibition for PFK. And now we're here and we're getting ready for the harvest. Not quite yet, but pretty close. So we're going to have two different areas. We're going to, from 1,6-fructobisphosphate, we can go and make DHA1, which is usually going to be converted into our 3 phospho glyceraldehyde So usually DHA1 DHA1 will transfer into the 3-glyceraldehyde. If it doesn't, though, 
then we're just going to lose the potential for glucose. So you want to harvest as much energy as you want. You want to make the most out of our three glyceraldehyde. And this is done by an enzyme called trinophosphate tri 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 isomerase. Isomerase, once again, as we are not um, doing much other than a structural change. There's no uh, loss or gain of energy in this um, reaction. And DHA1 is favored to go into 3-glyceraldehyde. And I'm writing it out here. We will, without it, we will lose half of our energy, which is never good. We do not want to lose our energy. So... Yep, drawing it out. Okay, cool. And this is very important too. Everything past this point will happen twice now because for one glucose, we created two products, DHA1 and 3-glyceraldehyde, but we're going to make glyceraldehyde twice, and this is where we're going to harvest a lot of our energy, as you will see in just a moment. So 3-glyceraldehyde will turn into our... One, three, I'm just kind of waiting for the drawing. I don't want to take for three, forever. One, three, bisphosphoglyceride. Or we're going to create our one, three, bispho, bisphosphoglycerate. Bisphosphoglycerate. I know I drew that ugly. And this is going to be an indirect harvest. We're going to gain our first indirect harvest. So NAD plus turns to NADH. And so this is going to have a different name of, of an enzyme. So we're going to take our three glyceraldehyde. And it's going to be called a... Wait a minute. Three glyceraldehyde. It's going to be called a dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase. So whenever you see an indirect harvest look for the dehydrogenase. So you're going to see this with NADH, you'll see this with FA, FADH2, and this is just indirect energy. So we, we're going to get three ATP from every NADH, every indirect NADH group, and we're going to get two ATP from every indirect um, FADH2 group. So dehydrogenase is an indirect energy. So it's very, very important. So that is our first energy harvest. Very cool. So our 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate will turn into our 3-phosphoglycerate. Phosphoglycerate. It's also 3PG for short. But uh, we're going to get our direct harvest here. And our direct harvest will be ATP, ADP into ATP. So we know it's going to be a kinase enzyme. So plus one ATP. So what could be the name? Well, it might be phosphoglycerate kinase. So it'll be our phosphoglycerate kinase. And that will be able to, that enzyme will be able to take that 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and create one ATP and make three phosphoglycerate. So our three bispho, our three phosphoglycerate will now turn into our 2-PG or our 2-phosphoglycerate. And 2-phosphoglycerate, the only difference between 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate is, once again, a structural change. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. So it's going to be phosphoglycerate, and this is going to be mutase. And remember, mutase is very similar to isomerase. It just means a structural change. It's not a big deal. Mutase, I like to think that it's... Um, it's like a mutate, uh, like mutated to something else, but it's not a big deal. It's not a mutation. It's nothing big. There's no energy transfer. This one's going to be more important. So two phosphoglycerate with uh, H2O coming off as well. We're going to have a enzyme called enulase, and it's going to create phosphoenol pyruvate. And so this one I think is the hardest one to remember, just because it's more random. But anyways, it creates phosphoenol pyruvate. No energy change. Phosphoenol pyruvate will turn into pyruvate. And this is our product. This is what we want. Pyruvate, there's going to be a... I'm going to quiz you guys right now, I think. So 
if it's called pyr whoa, that's up. If there's called if it's called pyruvate kinase, what is what energy are we getting? If it's a direct energy, what energy are we gonna get? If it's pyruvate kinase, what does the enzyme t name tell me? So I already drew it out, but ADP turns to ATP. If you got that, congratulations. ADP to ATP, so we gain another ATP, and we make a pyruvate. So if you remember from above, DHA1 turns to 3-glyceraldehyde. This is important because we're going to do this cycle twice for each uh, glucose. So we have one glucose, so the cycle will repeat twice. This is going to be extremely important in calculating what our ATP is and how much ATP we, we um, accumulated. So we have one NADH per cycle. We have two ATP made per cycle. And NADH, as I said earlier, it's three ATP. If you see FM, um, FM and H2, it's two ATP. So for every one glucose, there's going to be two cycles, two glycolysis cycles. So I'm going to calculate the ATP we just got. Both NADH and 2 ATP from one cycle is going to be multiplied by 2 if we're using the net sum of one glucose. NADH will also be multiplied by 3 because 3 ATP is an indirect source. And we create 10 ATP. So is this the answer for glycolysis, the amount of ATP? No, not at all. Why? Well, let's not forget about the ATP we used to get to our 1,3-bisphosphate. Uh, our so we lost some to gain some. And we have minus 1, minus 1. So we have minus 2 ATP to get to where we were at. So we take our 10 ATP, minus 2 ATP, and we get 8 ATP. And 2 pyruvate, which is very important because that's going to go to the link reaction, and then eventually, once it's converted to acetyl-CoA, we'll go into the Krebs cycle, or TCA cycle, as some people say. So cha-ching, we just got what we needed, what we got. I'm going to say it again, 2-pyruvate, go into the link reaction, and then from the link reaction, it will go into, the link reaction kind of turns it into acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA, is then made in the inner mitochondria, and that's going to go into the TCA or Krebs cycle. I'm going to have a video up sometime soon with that reaction. But very good, guys. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in. If you guys have any questions, email me below, and I'll be happy to answer any of the questions. Please subscribe. Thank you.